my ad, we've spent about $2,000 a day. 2K a day. Wow. 2K yeah. a day. And you're pushing everybody just to that one funnel. Yeah. Unlock the secret sauce of millionaire entrepreneurs. This is your exclusive VIP pass to the hidden world of the ultra successful business owners. I'm Chad Kaderi, CEO of Dashclicks, and welcome to Behind the Revenue. What's going on, everybody? We are on another episode of Behind the Revenue, and this time it's with Mr. Tyler Narducci himself. Now, Tyler, we had you on our old Marketers Mindset podcast. I want to say like two or three years ago. It's been a while since we last spoke. But from what I can remember, you are somebody who crushes it in the agency space. You have a marketing agency yourself, and you also coach marketing agencies within your high-ticket coaching program. Um, give us a little bit of context of kind of where you are a couple of years later since we last spoke to add some context for the viewers. Yeah, so still in agency coaching, still working with a lot of digital marketers, freelancers, agency owners to help them scale up their business. Uh, my business, though, since I'm I'm trying to remember when we when we spoke last, but I think it was 21 or 22. My business uh, has stayed the same, but it's also changed in a lot of different ways. Like you know, we're constantly growing, changing, improving our processes, our systems, and our marketing. Everything you know, a, a lot changes in an online business in two oh, yeah. three years. But um, but yeah, right now we are running a, our program called uh, the Done For You Leads and Sales Program. And primarily we do three main things. We help our clients generate leads. We help them close those leads into deals. And then we help them fulfill on those leads in terms of white label fulfillment. And then the fourth thing would be coaching as well uh, along the whole way. So it's kind of a, um, a business that helps people with the, the main bottlenecks that I experienced when I was growing my own agency and that I see most people in the space struggling with. If they're not struggling with one of those things, they're struggling with another one. So oh, yeah. those are kind of the core areas that we help our clients. And you, so this is basically, is this done for you or kind of like done with you? Yeah. So when we started, it, it's always been the core services in our program has always been done for you. But uh, and when we started, we had done with you elements included. Now we have completely gone into just like deep, deep done for you. So really like if they're if they're completely unplugged and they're working on another business, because we also work with a lot of serial entrepreneurs, if they're completely unplugged and they're working on another business, like we're not going to be held up in the things that we're doing for them, waiting for them to step yeah, in and do a thing. The bottleneck. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. So we, what we do is we prioritize them, you know, of course, remaining control of their business, being the CEO, being the pilot and, and overseeing and being as actively involved in our services as they want to be. But we don't, the show doesn't stop if they don't come in and do X, Y, and Z. So we've gone even further into the done for you. Gotcha. I'm curious, and I want to dive a little bit deeper into this um, because, it, and I've been. This has kind of been once again a trend for the viewers. You're going to see this across every podcast. Is I start asking questions that I'm actually really curious about, and I end up learning myself about so many things on this podcast. And hopefully, it bleeds through to the users too, the the people who are watching this. But like for me, like if I come in and I sign up, let's just hypothetically say, come in. Uh, as somebody who maybe probably saw one of your ads or something like that, right? And I'm looking to start my own market. Are you dealing with people who are just at the very beginning stages who want to start their own marketing agency? Or is most of the people are like, hey, Tyler, I've been doing my marketing agency for like a year and I just can't scale it. I need some help. Both. 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 Okay. Yeah. Is, a majority, is there a majority we... of one or the other? I would say the majority are clients that have already started in some way, shape or form. Uh, and have been either mildly successful or not successful. And then we're helping them fill those gaps, complete, you know, the, the whole picture, you know, a lot of them, they come in and they're, they're banging their heads about one big thing. It, oftentimes it's lead gen. I can't get any leads. You know, I'm a great, like we see a lot of different profiles. There's the freelancer who's great at what they do and they're just phenomenal at cranking out facebook ads or google ads or websites or seo but they are really bad at generating new opportunities for themselves new leads uh we see people that have two of those like they're really great at what they do and they're able to then do that thing to help them get leads but they're just terrible at closing 
Like they're, they, they completely drop the ball on the sales part. And so their big gap is sales. Then we see, you know, we see people who are just starting. We also see a lot of the serial entrepreneurs, like I had this business and that business, and I know that there's a lot of opportunity in the digital marketing space. So I'm looking to start this business as well. And I'm looking to do it right from the beginning. I'm not looking to, you know, try it and figure it out. Like I, I want a team that knows what they're doing. So we see a lot of those as well. Um, and then we have, you know, we have clients that are, you know, doing 50 K or more a month. And they're like, and they're like breaking, right? Like their fulfillment is breaking because they're totally maxed out. They're spinning all their wheels and they're not able to bring on any more clients. Um, like a lot of people, there's this myth out there that to scale, you just do everything that you're already doing more, like just more ad spend just and just, yeah, just crank it up. And like, it doesn't actually work like that. Like when you actually scale a business, things break and that's all normal day, all day. Yeah. Like, but people don't realize that people, especially people that are, are, are starting out in the digital space, the digital space, they think it more is just, it will just keep going up from here. And that's not real. Like businesses are all, like, they're like yo-yos my own business. I've experienced that. Like things go really well and then something breaks and then you got to rebuild it back up. Like, the inner workings of a 10K a month business and a 50K a month business and a 200K a month business are all completely different. A 200K a month business isn't just a 10K a month business that's doing more of the same 10K stuff. You have to kind of rebuild the whole system so that it can function at that, at that level and then have people, teams in place to be able to handle that more volume. Otherwise, the whole... The whole house crumbles essentially. Down. At what yeah. point do you? I have a couple questions that I want to. I want to go d dive a little bit even deeper into. Um, for one, at what point are you segmenting people? At what point is somebody qualified to be a successful agency where you put them into that profile, right? Because there's always like that milestone or that that achievement. Like, do I have X amount of clients? Am I making a certain amount of revenue in order for me to be considered? an established somewhat agency you know what i mean like where is like the break between the newbies and okay you're a real agency what are you seeing the trend being i don't think there's a specific dollar amount that's like okay you've hit that dollar so you're uh, a more established agency i can talk from like my own experience like when I first got started, I was bringing in a lot of local network clients. Like I, I got my first clients by, you know, helping out this nonprofit that I had an already existing relationship with. I had got my first, my next few clients from, you know, friends that were also business owners or that knew a business owner, or I frequented this establishment. So, and the, and the, the management knew me. So I pitched myself to them. And I think, and that's a great, great way to start. It was an awesome way for me to get, you know, my start back in uh, 2014, 2015. Um, and I think when you're dealing with a business that's still at that level, like you're, you're totally reliant on referrals, yep. you're going to your local network, um, and you're not doing anything with like cold uh, traffic or anything with like, uh, people who've never heard of you before. I think that is kind of what I would look at as yeah, an earlier okay. stage so versus not more established. Yeah, so not you're not focusing on the revenue being are they an established agency? It's more right. like can you actually sell to people that don't know who you are? Exactly, exactly. Because people think that, you know, oh, if I hit 10k, I'm an established agency. If I hit 20k, like those are great milestones, but if that all that 10k is reliant on one local client that you knew because you were Ooh. friends with some guy, that's not an established agency, right? It's I, I think the the threshold is more like are you able to take, like you said, people who have no idea who you are, hit them with your marketing, close them into a deal, and then repeat that process? If you're able to do that, I think you're you're now on your way or moving into established. I like that. So let, let's rewind back. So I come into your program, um, and you're you're really focusing on it. Seems like three buckets: it's leads, sales, and fulfillment for the most part. Those are kind of the main three. Um, yeah. most agencies, cause we have a coaching program too, so I can definitely relate to some of these things. Um, most, most agencies, a lot of them struggle with lead generation. I think that's like their main, the main, like, the irony, program. right? Yeah. The main, what are you doing? Cause you're saying that it's done for you. What are you doing for, I come in, I sign up, I'm ready to rock and roll. 
I'm in Slack or wherever it is that you're communicating with people, right? What, what, how do I generate leads? How do I get leads booked on my calendar today? So what we're doing primarily with our clients are paid ads, uh, LinkedIn lead generation, okay. and then lots of appointment setting in between. Okay, right? so, I like so this. this is going to so, be a fun conversation because I want to <laughs> talk about paid ads, but keep going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So paid ads uh, is a, a key focus of our offer. We're running, we, we, we create the copy, the images, the targeting, um, all that. And then we set them live and then we generate leads that way. Then we have a team of appointment setters because as you know, leads aren't always going to, you're not going to convert hundred percent into Never. appointments. So you're getting leads, but then you got to bridge that gap over to appointments. So we have appointment setters that are hitting those leads to convert them over into uh, more appointments for them. Some of them will naturally convert directly to appointments as well, which is great. But then we have appointment setters that step in and then we're also working on LinkedIn, uh, through, you know, our, our own software that we have, um, for connector campaigns, we have uh, appointment setters on that that are generating conversations with their target audience DMs, and then booking them DMs in. And... Yeah, DMs um, and then just regular messaging back and forth to kind of foster that relationship and book them in for an appointment. So, um, those I want to go back two really quick to the ads. I want to peel the onion yeah. back and I want to I want to see if I can okay. get some juice out of you. We'll have some fun with this one. So let, sure. for for Facebook ads, I come in and you're like, Chad, run some. Fa we're going to run some Facebook ads. Are you running the Facebook ads or are you training them to run the Facebook ads? That's my first question for you. We run them. You 100%. run them yourself. Okay, so you're the ones oh, who yeah. are actually generating them leads. Okay, cool. So you're already taking. You're taking oh, the yeah, pressure yeah. off of them trying to now learn Facebook ads. Okay, cool. And when you're running Facebook ads, what are the at the types of ads that you guys run to generate leads? Are you doing like opt-in campaign or like lead forms where somebody's like submitting their name and email to maybe watch like a webinar or something? Can you walk me through that funnel? Yeah, absolutely. So we have done two, we've done both. We we have done in the past conversion campaigns to a landing page funnel, then a drip email sequence with setters and that and that whole business. Right now, uh, we've gravitated more toward a lead form that redirects to booking form that then setters hit uh, after that and and follow up with nurture sequences. Um, so we've done both right now with I think with the former which is a landing page conversion funnel costs have gone up tremendously so getting conversions from that with smaller budgets is much more Very challenging yeah. so lead form to that redirects to booking form uh that's hit with follow-up uh from both automation uh in in terms of sms messenger bots email campaigns in addition to physical human setters reaching out as well to those leads uh, has yielded a better response and a lower cost per uh, yeah. acquisition for the client. Setters. So we have an we have appointment setters like in Dashlix. Um, everybody that signs up to Dashlix, we do you know all the back end email sequences, the emails, the SMSs, all that stuff, right? Uh, the second we placed an actual human setter we doubled the amount of phone calls that we were generating from the same amount of leads that we were getting. So we didn't yeah. change getting more leads. We just changed the putting the setter in there and doubling the amount of appointments. Cause a lot of people look when they get SMSs, they know that it's not most likely a human it's, it's automations and they, you know, it's impersonal. And then when a human calls them, sometimes it's just like one question that they have that they just want to get answered. And they're like, okay, cool. Let's book a demo. Right. So yep. human setters has changed the game for us. So definitely recommend it for you guys watching. Um, I want to go back even more. And I want to peel the onion back even more because I'm, I'm really fascinated with, I'm a Facebook marketer guy too. I love, I'm in the Facebook ads manager almost all day with, with my team. And, you know, I love creating like these different strategies and funnels and stuff like that. That's, that's pretty much what I do at Dashflix, Right. So my question for you is, so I'm an agency, this, this, are you, first of all, you said forms, are you using like Facebook lead forms or are you sending yeah. it to like a funnel? So you're, you're just Facebook going straight forms. up Facebook lead forms. What yep. is the ad? What are you saying in the ad and who are you targeting? Is it based on me? Like, do I get to pick and say, I want to target plumbers or chiropractors or whatever it is and then so 
like I said, we work with a wide range of clients. Some so we have established agencies and we have brand new agencies, but we don't want them to be the barrier for us to do what we do. So we're kind of prepared for both. If we work with an agency that's more established, that has an offer that they're selling and that they're confident in and that they want us to run that, well, the ad copy and their and their headlines and everything is going to reflect what they are selling, what they want to sell. If they come to us and they're like, I need help with offer creation, that's something else that we'll help them with. And we have white label offers that we know convert and, and do well, and that will we'll format for their niche, for their, uh, for their target audience, put in their ads, and then run that that way. Um, but we leave that decision up to the client. So the lead ad is not like a lead magnet that you're running. You're giving like a free, I see a bunch of people do this. Some, sometimes if the, if the client is adamant, like we're not going to be like, no, that has to be done this way. We'll, we'll work with them on that. Oh, look, we got the iOS. Yeah. The little, yeah I forgot. Well, it never works. I don't know why. Oh, really? My, yeah. My iOS reaction, I'll turn those off. Um, <laughs> So if we have a client that has a, an, a lead magnet that they want to test, we'll include that in it to see if it does any better. Um, but typically we're running, uh, you know, straight offers that, you know. So you're going direct response and you're just the offer in there. And then they're, if you're interested, fill out the lead form. That lead form Correct. is then probably either a button at the end of the lead form that's bringing them to or how are you bringing them? What are you bringing them to like a confirmation landing page on a funnel? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. on that, I'm assuming on that confirmation page is probably a video getting that show up rate up or testimonials or things like that. Yeah. It, we, we don't, we're not, if the client has that, yes. Uh, but if, if we don't have that to work with, then it had, we, we just confirm the call and then hit them up with our setters. Okay. And are they booking a call through the lead form or are they just sending their information? No, they're not they're booking the call, call right? through the lead form. They're 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 filling out the lead form and then they're going to book the call on the redirect. On the redirect, so I'm booking the call and then after I book the call, I hit a confirmation page, um, and then that's it. I'm done and I, I go away back to Facebook and see what my friends are doing for dinner. That's it, right? So that's the whole yeah. funnel that you guys have. And then obviously in the back end, you have the nurture sequence and the setter that's basically called. Now, okay, cool, got it. Um, how much are your, I know it's, it's vague, but what are your costs per lead right now? Like kind of floating around? Uh, generally, so we, we target less than 20, but depending on the less than $20 per lead, but less, uh, depending on the niche, we have clients that are doing a dollar 25 a lead. And we have clients that are doing more than that. I would say the average, if you average them all out would be about eight to 10. Eight to ten dollars per lead on Facebook. Now I know Facebook leads obviously are a lot cheaper than sending yeah. people off Facebook. Um, we've tested that in our agency. Um, I, I want to go. I want to go into the targeting for a second. So let's let's go back to the target because I'm, I'm really curious about this. So let let's say um, I'm an agency owner and I want to target. I don't know. My niche is pool repair companies, right? I deal with pool repair companies. How can you target people like that on Facebook? Because it's almost impossible to target like pool repair. You know what I mean? Like the targeting on Facebook is so tricky. Yeah. So I'm really fortunate that I have an amazing ads team. You talk about how you're in ad manager yourself all the time. I'm not. Uh, I, I stepped out of that a uh, long, long time ago. Okay. But my but my team does that primarily and they they manage the the targeting. What I do know is that when you can't, when there's not like, an actual interest-based group that you can go after directly. What they're doing is they're going after things that that interest group would be affiliated with, associated yeah. with, and then they're making it super clear in the actual ad copy imaging. and imaging itself that this is who this is for, essentially. Yeah. Oh, can you give me an example of what an ad might look like? Like what am I, am I literally like, just think of any offer that you have, maybe one of the white labeled offers that you have. Is it like, Hey, we're going to generate you, you know, 10 leads in the next 30 days. Like, what are you actually saying in that ad to get that person to fill out the, the information? Yeah. So it, it de again, it's going to depend on the client and what they're offering or, uh, what we help them with. But uh, generally speaking, it's always going to be it's always going to be focused on the outcome for that person, right? So what we, what we know works and what we know doesn't work breaks down pretty simply. What doesn't work 
is services. And I think a lot of people get this mixed up. Services is not an offer. Like, what's your offer? Oh, I do SEO and I build websites. Okay, well, that's going to flop on on an ad. If you say, you know, website five thousand dollars or SEO two thousand yeah, dollars, whatever. That's they, like, that's school. that's yeah, it, it that's going to flop. But you need to talk about the results that you're going to get. So if we're talking about uh, dentists, for just a, for example, they want cosmetic surgery patients, right? Yep. So we'll help you generate X amount of you know dental. Um, implant patients in the next X amount of days, that kind of direct response for gotcha. the results that they're after. Like That's that. generally what the ads yeah. are going to So you're getting like. somewhat of qu more qualified leads versus somebody like, oh, I downloaded your, uh, your PDF on yeah. how to do this. And, and that, yeah, so we, know yeah, I, I, it's a very, that. very small percentage that are, uh, that we're running a lead, uh, a, sorry, a, um, a lead magnet for yeah. and only the only people that we really run run lead magnets for in the lead form itself is people that are they come in and they're like i really want to test this so we're not we're going to tell them no okay sure yeah. let's test your lead magnet and, and see how it goes but generally speaking our strategy is yes we're willing to pay a little bit more per lead if it's going to be more qualified right Fair because enough. keep in mind yeah. we're also taking the sales calls for them so we don't want to flood our guys yeah, lines with a bunch of people that are like I'm curious yeah. All right. So let's let's. All right. So let's just call it ten bucks a lead. Whatever. On average, whatever we're averaging, let's say ten dollars a lead. Right. So are you are you telling me, Chad? Give me a thousand bucks. I'm going to generate you a hundred leads on average this month. Like, what's the ad, what's the ad spend that you usually need from a new member that's joining? What are you seeing? Like most people just spend. With so you? right now, we're we ask for about seventy five dollars a day to join, um, to to start because that way we get a good amount of lead flow coming through and we're able to, to, you know, crank it up pretty fast for them because just as an agency, you know, one of the things I think can be a fatal mistake is to not, uh, not be able to show something quick. That's why I think yeah, a lot yeah. of a SEO agencies struggle. SEO is like a really painful, uh, service to be in because you gotta, it takes so long to show anything and people today have no patience, right? Zero. They need to see something yeah. like right away. So with, you know, with the ad spend at that level, we're able to, you know, generate quite a few, you know, 75. leads straight out the gate. So, so here's my question for you. Um, I'll, you know, we have, obviously we have a coaching program and it's already hard enough getting people to spend money to join the coaching program. How do you also get, is everybody running ads that's coming into your program? Is that like the thing? It's like, if you're not running ads, yeah. like, dude, you're wasting time here, right? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like we, you could go the full LinkedIn route, but, and, it and don't get me time. wrong. Yeah, it exactly. You could go the full too. LinkedIn it route. Takes time. We, we used to offer a package without ads and it's just LinkedIn, but it's such a slow grind on LinkedIn. Like you, you can, you can get leads and sales and that's why LinkedIn is still a part of our offer, but it's so much slower than ads. And so, yeah, we, we kind of, we would rather work with clients that understand the power of ads and, and are willing to invest yeah. in that because we know that that's what works. And how how much is your let, let's say I go like the ad side? How much is your program to join? If I wanted to like join today as an example, yeah. So we have uh we have three different packages. Uh the in, the entry level package, our starter package is three k a month, and our our premium package, um, which is you know everything in it is seventeen k, and it gets you uh, six month? months. No, oh no, six God. months. Okay, <laughs> no, it's Jesus. it's seventeen k for six months. Okay, so three k a month, and I'm assuming most people are probably on or on the monthly option. Is that what it? Are you doing month? No, no they're not. Okay, wow. no, mo the the vast majority, eighty percent or more of our clients are on our premium package. Got you. So seventeen k. Okay, I'm the worst at math. So if you divide that by six months, what does that average out to? Is that like two or three? It's about uh, something like that. I'm horrible at know. math. Let me see. Probably the worst. I am too. I am too. Seventeen. Um, so what am I paying as an agency owner? Because whatever I'm paying, I have to pay you. And is that one shot, one hit, 17K? Or I'm assuming you have payment options and financing and all that stuff too, right? Hey, real quick, if you're a marketing agency or a B2B service or software provider, Dashclicks offers white label fulfillment services and software to businesses just like yourself. Go ahead and create your free Dashlix account. I went ahead and left a link in the show notes 
or you can just go to dashclicks.com. Yeah, we have payment. We have um we can split it into into multiple payments and we uh we have financing partners. We used to work with like an in-house style financing partner, but it that, that was just like a a slog. Like right. I I yeah, right. it wasn't it wasn't fun on our end because when you work with like an in-house financing partner on a coaching program or an agency, first off, they're they're like sharks. Like they take so much from the service provider to even accept it. And then God forbid the client like falls behind on a payment or whatever, they just pull it all back from you and you've already given your services and then you're chasing yeah. the client for the, it, it's like a, a nightmare. Um, so we have like third party financing companies that we'll refer them to and work with, but, um, and then we'll also, you know, provide payment plans as well. Cool. So I come in, I give you the 17 K right. And now you guys, on top of the 17K, I'm obviously, up, I'm at $75 a day because I need to run ads, right? So that's on top of that or without? Yeah, 17K? yeah, you have to pay for ads you on top of it. have to pay for it. ads, okay, cool. So yeah. 75 bucks a day, I'm paying, I'm starting to generate leads, they're going to my CRM, I'm excited, right? I'm starting to get warmed up, I'm seeing some type of action happen, which by the way, I really like that because you're 100% right with these agency owners, especially the newer ones. If they don't see oh, yeah. traction within like two to four weeks, they're out. They're out they're like they're, they're completely they're done with the whole yeah, business model of like, like what this shit doesn't work. It's another Amazon store thing like I'm out. Right. So yeah. I like that you're doing ads. I think that's why when you said ads at the beginning, I really wanted to dive deep into that because not many people are doing ads. So I come in uh, 75 bucks a day. I'm, I'm getting ads. I'm getting whatever. I don't know. Five, seven leads a day at 10 bucks a lead. Right. Mm -hmm. Um what what's happened like these leads by the way are leads that come in and then there's a setter that you said that within that 3k a month or the 17k whatever it is that i'm paying the setter's included so you already have the setter is included in that that's called yeah oh yeah yeah for the set yeah on the 17k package everything is everything that we offer is included like you get the whole get the whole house okay and then setter calls closes i don't know what, what's your by the way what's your scheduling rate from the leads that you're getting what percentage are you scheduling so we, you want to, our target is to get more, more than 30% booked okay. in now, depending on the industry, it, it, it could varies. be more, yeah, it could be less I mean, with gatekeepers and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's call it 30% for the sake of the conversation here. Let's say you're, you're shooting for at least 30%. Um, I get a hundred leads at $10 a pop. I pay a thousand dollars. 30 of those people, uh, have booked an appointment on my mm -hmm. calendar so it's costing me at this point i'm gonna try to be good at math it's costing me uh 30 divided by a thousand it's costing me 33 dollars about for a scheduled appointment um and which is phenomenal that's fuck, fuck like great, by the way. insane um, and like just for reference <laughs> i i mean like people don't realize how good that can be um yeah. and we, like i want to just i want to say this because it's something that uh, my business has had to learn over time <clears throat> because I'm, I'm surrounded by a bunch of really smart digital marketers all the time and our client, and, and you have to remember that your clients are not like your clients are gen, yeah. like they could be digital marketers, but maybe they're like website developers or maybe they're like SEO or, or whatever they are. Like they don't know the KPIs like, you know, so it is so important to constantly be drilling your clients, letting them know what KPIs are, how they're well exceeding them and and share your excitement as a team as you're doing well because if you don't you can end up with a client that's getting thirty dollar book calls and you know they're they're not happy yeah. or they think that that's Dude, expensive even if you gave or hundred dollar book calls I'd be happy right 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 and thirty dollar book calls like that's space. that's like that's that's high end uh, yeah. KPIs those are really really good not yeah. everyone is getting uh, thirty dollar book calls um, we've sure. you know we've had much more than that as well depending on the industry that you're in. So let's keep going down this 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 path. So 30, 40, 50, but whatever. Okay, I get a booked mm -hmm. call. What am, I'm, I'm not jumping on the call, right? Because I'm scared. I don't know how to sell. Who's, yeah. who's jumping on the call for me? Do you have – so within this, within this uh, program fee, you have closers that are closing deals. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so if you're, selling... our, if you're yeah, in our ahead. premium package, we have in-house closers. I manage, <clears throat> I manage a team of closers. Uh, How many that, closers do you guys have? Um, well, so six. Okay, great. Six. I have six employed 
um, right now. And then we have a recruitment partner that as we need Scale more, happens, we bring on we more. more yeah. Correct. And so each of our closers, Cole Gordon, no, <laughs> no, Super expensive. Uh, yeah, I, in fact, I used to have another coaching partner. I definitely won't name any names, but I used to have another coaching partner that was like really, really expensive and, uh, not coaching partner, sales, uh, partner. Yeah. But now I have one that, you know, it, it, that works with us is super great. And like, I, you know, I also like, what is it? I was looking for an analogy. I know that I know there's a perfect analogy for this, but I also use my own recruiter for my own sales team. <clears throat> so like they're they're uh they're all together so 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 let's say whatever let's go back to the calls 30 calls booked on the calendar your sales team so i'm completely like at this point i'm just giving you 75 bucks a day like i haven't really done anything right Mm -hmm. okay so you guys call and you're closing deals are you closing my offers like the deals that i want are you closing like facebook ads or, or is the salesperson trained and has like a bucket of things that they can sell like how does that work so generally speaking, offers and stuff. right. So our, we have two, two different types of our premium package. We have our agency premium package for marketing agencies that <clears throat> sell digital marketing and <clears throat> sorry, our closers are trained on how to sell digital marketing services. So even though they may be different formatted offers within the digital marketing field, they're, they're generally similar. So our closers are steeped in the clients that they're assigned their offer and know how to sell it. Um, if we get a client, cause we also work with clients that are not agencies, <clears throat> like other B2B business owners, sure. um, they will get a separate closer that's trained yeah. only on their offer because you can't have a closer that's like trying to sell Facebook ads and also roofs. You know what I mean? Like it, that just gets too watery. Yeah. So it, with our in-house closing team, those guys um, will sell first the offer that's already established in the agency. So if the agency comes to us, they have an offer, they've been selling it, that's what they want us to sell, we'll sell that first. But we also have um, downsell options available to them for our own white label packages. So let's say we have a client that sells <clears throat> like a, a seventy a $7,500 web design and Facebook ad package, right? We will sell that first. And if they don't have the money or the budget or the will or whatever, uh, they can then, the, our closers can then downsell to a pay per appointment style offer or something like that, or one of our white label offers. Um, and obviously, we get the permission from the agency owner that is this something that you actually do want to sell? Um, and it, do you want to use this as a downsell option? If they do, then we'll downsell to that. If they don't, then we'll just pitch their offer. Now, that's cool. We make it clear to them, if we're just pitching your offer and you're setting stone on your offer and we can't control that, then your numbers could be different from down, what... Your conversion uh, rate. You have right, your downsells. conversion rate could go down. I mean, it could go up if they have a really great offer too. We've also seen, we've also worked with really great offers. But if you have a garbage offer and you're stuck on it and you won't, you won't, you know, work with us to finesse it, then your numbers could be totally different. So we just kind of make that clear from the beginning. What's like a normal conversion rate like uh, that you guys see across your sales team? What's like your or what so, do you try to shoot for? We shoot for twenty percent, but anything between ten and twenty percent is generally yeah. what you're what you're dealing with if if it's a decent offer in the space, right? And are you talking is most of the sales that you guys are doing one k and up? Like, is it more like high ticket? Or are yeah, you doing like absolutely. No, we wouldn't sell anything ticket? less than one k. Okay. Yeah. Well, and 1K would be like ticket? the, so uh, a normal ticket would well, be like. Better question. What's your number <laughs> one selling package? So people really like uh, pay per pay per appointment. And what we'll do is we'll stack several appointments on the front end so that there's some type of setup fee for the client. Uh, then we fulfill those appointments and then they, they build them on a weekly basis. Those are the easiest to sell because there's less skin in the game. It's more of a yeah. performance-based offer, that kind of thing. Um, once you move into more retainer style, then an average ticket could be like a 5K upfront for Facebook ads and then a 3K a month retainer after that for like an initial three-month agreement being 11K total. Gotcha. Fair enough. Somebody that's running $75 a day for 30 days, 
how many clients are they usually getting at like the end of the whole thing? Like, what can I kind of expect? Is there anything I can, let's say I'm just running like a normal Facebook ads package or something pretty basic, like nothing crazy. Yeah. So 30 days is a really short period of time. Let me, let me first say that 30 days is a, is a super short period of time. Um, especially if you have an untested offer, but if you have a more, a more basic offer, um, that's, you know, easier to sell like a paper appointment, then ideally we're looking to close, you know, one to three a month at least, um, as they start coming through. Yeah. And now, now the sale is done, right? Leads come in, sale is done. What happens next? You said you have white label fulfillment, right? Yeah. So then, so we also, so this is this part of the of the of our our service has evolved over time as well. We used to um, you know bring them in and and handle everything for them, but when we did that, it it kind of disengaged the actual agency owner from their business a little too much. So now what we do is we do all the fulfillment, but it's it's white labeled, not white gloved. So white gloved would be like. We do all the client communication. We do all the fulfillment. We do all the onboarding. We do all the the setup and everything. Now, in terms of the white label piece of our our um, puzzle, we have we remember we provide coaching. So in the coaching, we're teaching our clients if they don't already have systems and processes in place for this, how to set up a Slack account, invite their cli- invite their client over. We'll give them a white labeled in you know onboarding form. They'll to give that to their client. We'll get all that information that we need and the access that we need through that. Um, and it's unbranded, so it's not, you know, our, our, our name on it. Um, and then we have another Slack channel for us and the client to communicate yeah. about that client specifically, separate from the Slack channel that we have with the client to communicate about their campaigns, right? Yep. And so we communicate with them, we fulfill all the work, and then they have a, their own Slack channel where they're speaking directly with their client. They're, ma- they're uh, project managing basically. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. And you got, are you doing this in house? Like you're running the Facebook ads or SEO or I don't know, whatever people are selling with you. Or are you using yeah. also white label fulfillment partners? No, just, uh, we used to use white label fulfillment partners. But now we brought it in house. Um, and now we have, uh, it's the same ads team that's running the client no. ads is the white I label. Was, it sounds like you guys are doing a lot of ads, just like you're selling a lot of ads <laughs> in general, like selling ads, using ads for, it's like a paid, paid ads. Yeah, like we're cool. we're knee deep in ads for sure. Okay, cool, awesome, um, man. That's a that's that's a pretty cool program that you put together. That's very unique. As it didn't happen know. overnight. It's yeah, it started I, in 2019, so it's been five years. Yeah, you've evolved getting to this the point. Heck yeah, out of it, man. But that sounds really awesome. And w- like for you guys, for your company, like, and th- this is all you offer. This is like your main thing, right? The coaching stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. And you said that you still run your own agency or is that just kind of like something that like runs on the back burner? That's so we still have clients like original, like non agency clients that we work with. Um, I wouldn't say that pushing, you know, trying to get more clients in that fashion is really my focus. Like, yeah, same with us. That's we're, we're more, we're more kind of helping the, you know, the people that are coming through the program now, we also help non agencies as well. So we're working, we also work with like B2B business owners because one of the cool things, I mean, I don't know if it's cool or if it's, it's kind of annoying for my closers, but like people like our offer. So they book in, even though they're not a marketing agency and we, we looked around and we're like, okay, do we want to just like throw all these leads away that aren't, you know, marketing agencies when we could still do most of our systems and processes for these other B2B businesses. So we have a separate premium package that's non-agency. Um, cool. And those guys aren't going to get our in-house closers, but those guys will get a commission-based closer that will recruit cool. for them and place on their offer. So, and that's just the main difference. So we're still running ads, well, still generating them leads, still closing deals for them through a commission-based closer. Um, and they won't, but they won't get the fulfillment because obviously they're, they're a separate business or doing their own fulfillment, but we're still doing leads and sales for them as well. So I would say my agency, it would be taking in new clients through that. Um, and then the program is with agencies. Yeah. So like just for the coaching program, if you don't mind me asking, how many like new members are you bringing on a month? Um, 
Well, it depends. Uh, <laughs> like every business, we have uh, big yo. Oh yeah, we have we huge yo-yos. Well, we what's definitely it like have a good month. What's a, a good, good month? What's a bad month? Of new a members good month would be like maybe twenty-five to. Wow, that's great. Yeah, a, a good month would be like twenty-five or more. Um, a, uh, on the lower end, between ten and fifteen. And these are Still premiums. Great. Yeah, yeah, they're premiums. These are so premium. How many, yeah. How big is your team? Like that? I guess that are about about thirty. Thirty people. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need a bigger team. You're taking on that's a lot of people. All right. Yeah. Now I want to get to the fun stuff because that was really <laughs> fun. I want to get to the fun stuff. Um, this is behind the revenue, right? So let's talk about the flip side of it. So you just walked me through me going through your whole program, which is really cool, by the way. Thank you. How do you actually you how do you get new members? What are you doing? Yeah. Are you running ads, I'm assuming? You guessed it. Yeah, Facebook running ads. ads. Or TikTok. Walk me through that cuz that's that's what I'm curious about too. Yeah. So, uh for my program, I, I would say 99% of our clients are going to be coming from our ad campaigns. Um, if you're watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, uh, you've probably seen my ad at some point in the it. last five years. Like, it's hard to miss uh, in the digital marketing space just because we're just cranking it out all, all the time. Um, and we, we that's, that's our main push. Now, we've tested Google. We've tested TikTok. There was a blip in time where TikTok was amazing. Uh, I, saw, and, I used to see your ads on TikTok. Yeah, and TikTok. I mean, you you won't right now. Uh, we may dip our toe. I mean, I go back and test it out every so often to see if it, you know the good old days are back. But we ran our offer on TikTok for a while uh, back in twenty two, um, and it was doing great. But then cost just went through the roof, and TikTok became you know the whole super like popular. gold rush. Yeah. yeah, it came super popular, and it just it just ads. like it, yeah it. it it kind of, in terms of what we were doing, the cost skyrocketed way past what Facebook was. And I'm like, okay, well, not sustainable. So we pulled back from, from TikTok. Now, I definitely plan to, to retest TikTok again uh, here soon, but we won't put a ton of money into it. But so primarily Facebook, Facebook ad. And Instagram? Fa yeah, Facebook and Instagram. Um, and YouTube? We tested YouTube, couldn't crack it. Now, I, we so cracked hard. TikTok. We cracked TikTok for a good six months and it was it was great while well, it was great but then it, it fizzled out youtube we never cracked like ne never never so even once hard dude like i can't crack youtube cold ads for our for a lot of our offers i just use youtube for remarketing so i can hit them in another place yeah um, i think that's why alaric so alaric heck uh he does so well with his offer so well he kills it because it. everyone struggles with youtube yeah. and he has and his uh, whole offer is like i'll help you crack yeah. youtube that, that's why he's he coming crushes. on our podcast he's he's booked with me so he'll be on here i think next either this week or next week so keep your he's eyes awesome. out for that next episode guys um yeah alaric heck is uh awesome i was actually just at i went to traffic and funnels um and we went to a private event and he was there with me we were at it was like a private gambling night that they did in vegas uh so nice. that was fun but he's a great guy yeah, and youtube youtube is super hard man um, it is so so facebook and instagram ads i'm assuming the f you're probably are you not running lead forms right you're sending them to an application funnel yeah we have we've done both but right now we have a a, a conversion funnel um the the thing that works well for us is we've been around for a while so we have a lot of testimonials and videos and yep. stuff like that. So, and you can't shove all that into a lead form really. So we, we are doing better on our cost. Now here's the, here's the kicker. My cost per lead and my book call is like four to five times more than our clients. Like I pay on average 150 to $250 per call for my offer. Per book now call. it's okay per call. So when I, so when my clients, that's why I always, that's why I, I did that sidebar earlier in the episode about like preach to your clients that how good their results are because they have no idea. And like, oh, like if you skip that part, you're going to, you're fatally shooting yourself. Like my own ads cost, you know, north of 150 per book call for as long as I can remember. And currently we're at like $200 a call, but that's okay because we're selling a $17,000 product. 
it's not okay if we were selling some low ticket uh, thing or, or, or weren't getting any sales, right? $1, so or something like that. Right, 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 right. Well, have um, but you that's, done yeah. the metrics to see uh, how what's the cost per acquisition to acquire a seventeen thousand dollar client? Like, do you have to spend three yeah. grand, five grand? Like, what are the numbers for you? Yeah, so it it of course like all oh, these questions it varies per per month, but ideally um, we're looking at like between two and three um, generally great. to close a deal. It's still, still great, great, but we also have a ton of in-house expenses. Like I just walked you through that whole model. I have to pay ads managers. I have to pay coaches. I have to pay sales stuff. closers. Um, all of that. Like, and my, my closers want my closers, they're in-house. And so one of our features is zero commission sales. So if you're an agency, we're not charging a commission on the sales that we make. So they keep all of their profit. So how do I make up for that? I pay for that wow. yeah. internally. So even though our cost per closed deal could be good, we have a ton of other internal expenses that sure. make up for that. Um, How much you know. you spend and then there's on, months on where ads, it's not that good. <laughs> My ad, we've spent about $2,000 a day. 2K a day. Wow. 2K yeah. a day and you're pushing everybody just to that one funnel. Yeah. And that funnel is basically, break. walk me through that funnel. What does it look like? The pages, like what's there? Opt-in that triggers a 10 day email sequence, uh, VSL, short VSL, mini VSL, like Joel Irway style, yep. which love yeah, him. Love you should him. have him on the, on the show. He's, coming he, on. He, he's booked with me too. He was booked with me yesterday. He rescheduled for next week. But yeah, Joel Irway like helped me make my business with that yeah. VSL back in 2015. He's amazing. Um, mini VSL with app, with a application form on it application, then routes, qualified bookings to my sales team. Um, and then we stay on them forever with retargeting, with email campaigns, with my podcast, with my social media, all of that. We very often will close deals that have been in our pipeline for uh, three years. We closed one that was there for four years. We had wow. four years worth of history in our CRM uh, on a recent deal. And that's why another thing that I constantly am talking to our agencies about, like if you give up after two months or three months and you're banging your head against the wall, like we are closing deals that have been in our pipeline for four years worth of follows. You know how many email broadcasts and podcast episodes and social yeah. medias and yeah. how much money I've spent on them and retargeting. Like I, I, I can't even fathom, right? Like they're probably a wash with how much I spent on them to get that in or, or, or negative, but you know, that's kind of what it takes to build up over time, you know, dude, two K day and ad spend sending them to one funnel, one core product and just scaling it and making sure that you have a quality product. It sounds yeah. like you're doing the right thing. And I'm assuming at this point you're, you're a multi seven figure business, right? Obviously it would make sense. You're spending two K a day. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And Man, I'm actually I'm fascinated by the whole thing because um, I've been watching <laughs> your journey for a while, uh, and you're crushing it, dude. And I'm I'm really happy for you. I genuinely am. Like you deserve it. You've been crushing it uh, for the for years already, man. So thanks so much, dude. Yeah, one of the things that that is cool um, about the company is is we'll hear people that decided to go with somebody else uh, for whatever reason. And then they'll come back and we'll get feedback like, I should have known that, you know, I seen you for multiple years and that you weren't like a fly by night company yep. that pops up and like promises the world and then disappears. Like, cause if we were, we would have already been gone a long time ago by now. Um, and so that, that's cool for you. And they're like, I should have gone with you the first time. Cause this company that I, I chose or went with, like they're gone now or they're, or, you know, it was, you know, it didn't, it, it didn't do anything. In the coaching space. I yeah. have two more quick questions and then we'll wrap it up here. So first question I have for you is um, you're booking all these calls. Um, uh, what's your show up rate for, for the calls that you're booking for your coaching program? Oh, for my own show up rate? Yeah, like your show up rate for the call. You're spending 2K a day in ads, running ads, people are booking. What's a show up rate on that? You know, you're getting, you know, 150 to $200. Now you said that's per 
showed call or is that just per book? No, 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 that's per booked call. Per booked call. Yeah. So it per goes call. up yeah, no, when we talk about that. showed calls. Like 50%, yeah. 50% show rate, 60% show rate. What are you, what are you at? That's where we're um, at right around usually around 60%. It's hard, man. So show up rate. 60% is, is right about normal. We'll have periods where it could be way worse. Um, and like, like actually very recently earlier this month we were dealing with we were dealing with uh, a a lot of just like broke leads or bad leads bad fits and no shows and so we literally just reset the ads like we didn't change anything we just relaunched new campaigns to just start over algorithm uh, and that tends to work shockingly if if like things are getting bad in terms of lead quality just relaunch campaign relaunch the same campaigns over and all of a sudden the algorithm hits it's weird um but yeah, 50, 60% other, is normal. The other week for the first time in six years of Dashflix history, we had a hundred percent show up rate for the first time ever. We had 75, uh, I think 75 booked calls for Dashflix demos. 100% mm -hmm. of them showed up. It was insane. I've never had that in my life. Was this over the span of how much time? It was one week. Wow. You had a hundred percent people show up for an entire week. Yeah. hundred percent. I don't know if I've ever had that. I've never had that in my entire life. And I thought I was looking at the data. I was like, something's fucking wrong here. Yeah. Like, right. Is, is something not triggering? And I had to actually go through because we use Calendly and I went through to Calendly and in Calendly, if an appointment doesn't show up, we cancel the call through Calendly. So it will show you like the ones that are canceled and the ones mm -hmm. that are not. And we had a hundred percent show up rate. And I think so a couple things that we did because um, we, we changed a bunch of things, but I don't think it, it resulted in 100 percent show up rate. I think that that was just like a fluke, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a lot of stuff that we do for show up rates, like a couple things that we do is um, first thing that we do is obviously when they uh, schedule a call, we bring them to a confirmation page that gets them all excited for the call with like a video, right? Normal stuff. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll actually send them in Calendly. We send them uh, three reminders. Uh, 24 hours, one hour, and five minutes. But on the one hour reminder, it's actually a reconfirmation link that Calendly has. It's like a little feature that basically will send them, hey, if you're going to show up to the call, click this link. If not, we're going to cancel the call out automatically. Right. So mm. we'll have a lot of people kind of get like a little scarcity and reconfirm. And then we also send a voice drop 30 minutes before the call. Uh, that's all automated. We do it through Zapier. Um, and we do it, uh, 30 minutes before the call and it's me on the call on the voicemail. And it's like, Hey, Chad from Dashflix. Um, I see that you have a call coming up here in the next 30 minutes. We're super excited to speak to you. One of our account executives are like really pumped up to have you on the call. Just make sure it's a zoom call show up three minutes before, you know, all that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that definitely helps a little bit. Um, and by the I way, those, that. those confirmation and the reminders from Calendly, we send emails and texts just in case, right? Is yeah, I'm doing that too. Are right, where's your voice drop going to? Is that is that going to drop SMS Cowboy. or? We use no, no, no. Like, how, how are you getting to them? Email, SMS, or? Or the voice drop? Yeah. How does it? How is that getting to them? Phone. Oh, a call. No, it's a voicemail. It's like a pre-recorded voicemail. Voice. Drop. Oh, a voicemail. So okay, so the phone doesn't ring. They just no, boom. No, they have a vo no. they have a voicemail. It rings Got for like it. a split second, and then they have a voicemail like. 30 seconds later okay right? that's cool um, we, okay. use, uh, we use drop cowboy for that and we integrate it with zapier and what we do is we just have a zap that basically says every time a calendly appointment is booked um we will then create a filter or a delay on the zap mm -hmm. and we're like delay it until 30 minutes before the call and then hit them with a voice drop i love that so that works pretty cool and then on top of that recently a couple months ago we would also have our setter we just recently lost one of the setters that we have so a new setter starting on like i think like a couple days from now um but what we've been doing with that setter is um she'll call and reconfirm the appointments so we have the setter manually calling and also reconfirming the appointments so all of those things put together will start bringing up your show up rates. So oh, those, for sure. those are some of the things that we've been doing that we've been playing around with um obviously the majority of the stuff is just fully automated we're not doing anything except for the setter um and it works it, it increases the show up rate and obviously like just in general, like if the quality of your leads suck for the viewers, like you can do all that stuff and they're still not going to show up. Like they just a lot of people, especially with ads, a lot of people with will see your ad. They'll get excited for the moment. They'll book a call and then they'll forget that they booked a call. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one other thing also that I will say that has that I think that has had the, the most impact is same day or next day bookings. 
Um, if you have people like if you're if you don't have the availability to book calls same day because maybe your capacity you're just booked out and like you know like the times are not available till the next day right which is normal in 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 a sales organization right you have times where there's just the, the closures packed out for the day right um our no-show rate skyrockets uh, when somebody books more than 24 hours or if it's not like same day same day is usually like super high like 80 to 100 percent show up rate anybody wow. after that the show up rate just depletes like crazy wow yeah we're we're usually uh booking next day or Change third it. day yeah I, same day oh if my god my closers same day my closers are gonna my closers would hate me if i give them no warning on a call we put in Calendly because uh, any booking system does this. It's like how uh, the delay between when they can book a call, right? Sometimes people will like want to give their closers like a one hour or five hour notice, right? Dude, we mm -hmm. put five minutes, five minutes. You can oh book a God. call within five. I know it's crazy. And, and you know, your closers are like, shit, like I have to like keep refreshing my page to make sure I don't get any. But the reality is if you can do same day bookings, do it. It completely changes the game for your no-show rate. It's in, it's it's insane. I'll pitch that to my closers and see and see uh, how they take it. My closers can be divas. I'm not even gonna lie. They're no, they're it is what it is. They're, <laughs> they wanna, they're there to. They want to make the money. Yeah. They want to. Yeah, yeah. So like, if if you are more likely to speak to somebody than just you got to do it, right? Yeah. Um. So that's that's those are some of the things that have been working um for us. Like obviously our demos are for our like software and white label fulfillment. Um, yeah. uh, not necessarily so much for our coaching program. Um, in fact, and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that I did this call because once again, this happens every podcast is like, I told you at the beginning, I was like, I learn all these things and then we can go back and start implementing and iterating. But like, we haven't ran ads for our coaching program. I don't think really ever. I think if we ran ads, it was maybe for like a small period of time. We tried like, you know, like a, you know, like a little mini webinar funnel or something like that. Right. But most of our coaching program sales comes from direct cross sales from dash clicks. So people will come in and they'll use our software, right? They'll Those are so much more affordable though. Yeah, well, they're like, free. For cost, yeah, anything. cost for acquisition is way better on those. They've yeah, already they're, pay, they're paying system. you for something else. Yeah, it's an upgrade. Yeah. It's it's much more yeah. affordable and than what happens is a lot of the time is they already know, like, and trust us because they're already using one of our products. So literally what I do usually is once a month, maybe I'll send an email blast out to our whole user base with the offer for our coaching program or maybe like a free coaching call or something like that, right? To kind of get them in the mix. And we'll just book like 50, 60 calls and it'll fill up the calendar for like a week or two for our sales reps because mm -hmm. our calls are 45 minutes. By the way, another thing is we just brought them down to 30 minutes. We're testing that out because we've got the pitch dialed in for both demos and our our dash elite calls um our coaching program calls we brought them down to see because we have so many people that come in are just not qualified sometimes you know when you get them, and it's like now i have to waste 45 minutes and you kill my whole day right yeah. so we brought them down so we can get more calls and we're working on we're, we're one thing that we're working on is qualifying um we're actually going to be i don't know if we're are gonna you not putting are you not putting time in between the calls for the closer no <laughs> your closing team they're they're going through it hey but if they're closing and they're making money then they're happy right it's, yeah uh it's it works we got it to work but it's it's nice. um we have a lot of automation set into play where they really don't need to do anything like even yeah. when they're running um when they're running a card for our coaching program like they run it through one of the funnels that we create and everything gets automated in the back end. Um, like they get set up everywhere and it's it's fully automated. DocuSign goes out, like they sign it. When they sign it, it moves them over a stage and our pipeline sends them invites to everything. Like So like they just need to worry about running the credit card. And then we have an, uh, an admin that will reach out to them, make sure that they set up and then they get an onboarding call. They get a link to do an onboarding call with the head coach, right? So like nice. all, like it's just like all they're worried about is just like, like make sure that they're a good fit, run the credit card, all the, all the manual stuff kind of, happens in the back end right and then i'm just I'm on to the next call right i just yeah. move it over in my crm that's all they do they literally move it over in the crm love and it dash clicks um shameless plug uh but yeah <laughs> but yeah so th this has been i know we're running out of time here so we'll wrap it up but this has been an awesome call i know i can talk about this stuff for literally days um i'm sure that we will have you on uh, again here in the near future because I like to see progression. Um, if anybody wants to, by the way, see our last podcast that I did with Tyler, 
This was probably a couple of years ago, like 2021, 2022, something like that. Uh, it's our Marketer's Mindset podcast, which is our old podcast that we used to have. It's actually on our YouTube channel or on Spotify if you want to check it out. Go in there. You'll see Tyler Narducci's name. You can click and watch the old podcast and see the progression that he's made throughout the last you know, three years maybe from when I spoke to him. And I'll sh- I'm sure we'll do another one soon. So, Tyler, if anybody wants to reach out to you and connect with you, where's the best place? Our website, ProfitPeak.co profitpeak.co all right awesome thank you so much brother appreciate you and we'll see you again soon hey do you want more of the behind the revenue podcast look join our private facebook group where marketing agencies from all over the world are sharing strategies network and scale their businesses together visit facebook.com slash groups slash dash clicks to get instant access and also if this podcast helped you in any way please do me a favor share it with friends leave us a review on itunes or spotify that really helps build our community